right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, we've got a couple of interesting physique updates from Nick Walker today. And now today would be less than three weeks out from the New York Pro and just less than two weeks out from the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing, which Nick will be attending. So that's probably why we're starting to see a lot more physique updates from Nick, revealing physique updates because really he has no reason to hide uh, how he's going to look at the New York pro because he's going to be doing a guest posing the week before. So I expect we'll probably see a lot more, but the most important of these updates, or at least the most relevant one is the most recent one, the back double bicep pose. And it's relevant because you can see both hamstrings here and his hamstring is what he injured. Um, that kind of took him out of the Olympia or literally took him out of the Olympia, not kind of. Now, because he's not posing in a mirror here, you can see the mirror off to the side, the leg that's injured would be the leg furthest away, or the leg that was injured would be the leg furthest away from the camera. So the leg that he's got with his foot back towards the camera is the uninjured leg. And then the leg that's more forward is the leg where he had the injury. So the leg that he's presenting to the camera, his hamstrings actually look pretty good, but that's not the injured leg. So you can't really see, I think, in this picture, how recovered or not the hamstring that was injured is at this point. But the hamstring that you can see looks good, but hopefully they'll be balanced when he's on stage. Now, as far as his back goes, um, I think he's made some improvements here. I think he looks a lot thicker throughout the back, especially if you look at the density that he's got like in his lower lat area. Obviously, his arms look huge, but overall, I'm really excited for this comeback. Now, also posted today, we got a most muscular shot from Nick. And this one I'm more impressed by because of the fact that we've seen a lot of these updates from Nick over the past, you know, however many weeks of prep. And one of the things that I've been critical of is his quads, the lack of separation in the quads. This is one of the better pictures I've seen of his quads in terms of separation that he's posted from this really entire prep. You can really see some deeper really noticeable striations now in his quads to where in a lot of the pictures that we were seeing before you weren't seeing it so much and i would even say in this picture if you look at the quad on the left of this picture you can even see some cross striations on that uh vertical striation so his legs look pretty good here from the front compared to how they had been looking earlier in the prep so i like this update because there's two things that i was worried about with nick because of the injury Number one was his training, because if the injury, if he was training through the injury and trying to recover from that injury, I wondered how much it would actually change the way that he trained his legs in general. So not just the question of would he recover from the injury, but would that process of recovery and trying not to re-injure it, would that change his training in a way that would affect the way his legs looked overall, including his quads? Because even prior to the injury, his quads were kind of a point of criticism when he lost the Arnold Classic to Samson Dowda. Now, the other thing was, is he going to be imbalanced because of the injury? Is that affected hamstring going to look noticeably, noticeably different than the unaffected side? But looking at this update from Nick, I'm a little bit more confident in how Nick's quads look. Um, so it kind of answers that training question. His quads don't look bad here. But I do, I do still think in some of the updates, they were lacking that separation. So hopefully this translates to the stage. And then this isn't from today, but this was from this weekend. Nick posted a side shot of his legs. Um, and I believe this would actually be the affected hamstring. So like the back double bicep pose in that picture, the, like I said, the hamstring he was putting towards the camera was the unaffected one. Based on this, this would be the hamstring that was injured that he's presenting to the camera and he's got, he's got some meat on there. He's got some hang to that hamstring. It still, it doesn't look like, um, it's like atrophied or small. So now that we've seen a really more complete look at Nick Walker's physique, I want to ask you guys again, what you guys think about the New York pro can Nick Walker be stopped? Is he just going to come in and win this thing easily? Even though this lineup is shaping up good. I mean, we've talked about all these new men's open guys that are coming into the lineup. But you can also not forget Angel Calderon will be in here, 212, from 212. He's done well in open. He's won open shows before. He's done exceptionally well in 212, a top three Olympian. And you got Quentin Araya, Martin Fitzwater, um, Tony O'Burton, Tim Budishim, 
a really nice lineup shaping up here. And after seeing these updates, my opinion is, I think it solidifies Nick as the front runner still here. And I think he's still, by far, the favorite to win. However, that being said, I, I still think we could see a battle here. It could be a battle between one and two, but I have a feeling that top three battle, it could be between two and three really close. I, I think it's going to be a really tight top three. And I'm leaning towards, at this point, we don't know the full lineup at this point, but right now I'm leaning towards Nick, Tonio, and Martin as a potential top three here. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Now, next up in the news, we've got a couple more physique updates from Neckzilla, Rubiel Mascara, and also the news that Rubiel is going to be working with a new coach, Francisco Espen. And to be honest with you guys, I'm not super familiar with this coach. Um, he was previously working a little bit with Milos, and then also he was, to some extent, maybe just for the posing or the training, he was working with Chris Cormier in some capacity, but I don't think it was like as a full-blown coach. But now he's working with this guy. And in these latest updates, like I said, there had been some talk about Rubiel potentially doing the New York Pro. Um, I was told that he actually committed to competing at that show. But looking at these updates, to me, it looks like there's no possible way he's a couple weeks out from competing. And don't get me wrong, the guy looks great. He looks freaky. He looks huge. He, I mean, he's a beast. But he would be under three weeks out in these pictures and in this video. And I just, I think the detail is just not there. I think we are going to, well, hopefully we do. But he said he's going to also do the Dubai Pro, which is much later on in the summer, which would give him a lot more time to prepare. That makes a lot more sense to me. Um, so I wouldn't get my hopes up as far as seeing Rubiel in New York. I mean, and you combine it with the fact that he just uh, switched up his coaching. I would not expect to see him on stage next month. Now, next up in the news, we did get a guest posing from Beef Stew, who will also be competing in the New York Pro. Um, Conditioning-wise, for three weeks out, I think he looks fantastic. Um, Size-wise, I do think he looks bigger, obviously, than the last time that we saw him compete. I think my criticisms are still the same. I think the legs a little bit undersized because his upper body looks like it's grown quite a bit. And the upper body just outsizes. To me, when I'm looking at these pictures, there's just a bit of an imbalance there, especially from the quad to upper body ratio because he's got really wide lats. He's got pretty big arms. So like that width and that size in the upper body in the poses that he's hitting here, like the front lat spread or the front double bicep, the separation in the legs is good, but size-wise, it just doesn't match that thickness that he has in the upper body. And then looking at the back, um, I'd say more lower lat thickness and development. But Stu is definitely a guy that I'm not counting out at this New York Pro. I think he's a really good bodybuilder. He's got a ton of potential. And I, I personally love his physique, and he seems like a good dude, too. Um, so I'm excited to see what he does in New York. There's a very strong possibility he's going to be a first call-out guy. A very strong possibility He's going to be battling on the top end of that lineup. And I think he's one of those guys that in a couple years, he brings up the legs, brings up those lower lats, and just the overall thickness in his back. Um, he's, going to be, he's going to be a dangerous dude. I like his physique a lot. Now, next up in the news, we did also get a physique update from Quentin Araya, Quint Beastwood, at under three weeks out. And... Like I've, I've said many times, I'm very excited about Quentin because he's got a great structure, very aesthetic. He's a big dude. And one of the things that I really like about him is he's got that wild card wow factor because he's such a big, tall guy, such a different frame, such a different stage presence. If he really nails it and he comes in with the size that he seems to have, he seems to be... He, I don't think he's really been saying how much he weighs in any of these updates but he looks like he's he's got to be high 200s, close to 300 pounds in good condition. With his height, I feel like he's got to be. And he has formally announced that he is doing the New York Pro now. I talked to him right after I made my video about him doing the New York Pro. And I realized he hadn't actually said it yet publicly. So I said it before he did and I kind of felt bad about that. But he has since announced that he is doing it. But for me, when you look at him... And especially in a lineup like this in New York with what we've got so far, he's a very different bodybuilder than these bodybuilders that are in this lineup. 
like I said, from the standpoint of stage presence, from the sta- from the standpoint of height, and aesthetics too. He's just got a really good structure because he's got such a big frame to work with. So I think he's got a true wild card factor because in this lineup, he is competing with shorter guys. They're short guys that have a ton of muscle, granted, and this is no you know shade on a shorter bodybuilder, but when you're talking about some of the top guys potentially being you know, Nick Walker, Tony O'Burton, Martin Fitzwater, uh, Angel Calderon from 212. These are shorter guys. They're going to look very different on stage next to Quint. He's got like that Samson Dowda, Andrew Jack look to him. So if he comes in here and really nails it, this is the type of physique that I feel like could pull off a major upset because he's going to stand out. So if he's like, if he's really dialed in, conditioned to the bone, and he's as big as he looks in some of these Instagram posts, he's going to be on that stage, you know, what, five inches taller at least than everybody else. He's really going to stand out. And you're really going to notice that conditioning. You're really going to notice that size. You're really going to notice that aesthetically pleasing physique because he's going to be really standing out in this lineup. So I feel like if he nails it, he's one of the guys here that could really pull off an upset. And by upset, I mean he's never won a show of this caliber before. And by upset, I also mean, like I said earlier, I think a lot of people are just expecting Nick to win. So I think any result other than Nick winning is going to be an upset. And when you compare him to like Andrew Jack and Samson Dowda, the difference is, you know, maybe Andrew Jack has a little bit more of that 3D round fullness to his muscle bellies that makes them pop a little bit more than Quentin's. When you compare him to Samson, maybe Samson has a little bit more muscle maturity, a little bit more size. But overall, at least in these updates, he looks like he could stand right there with him. And I think a comparison with Andrew Jack and Samson Dowda is a good comparison for him. But anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that bell notification icon, all that good stuff. And as always, I love you guys. appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power. Signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.